Yanis Varoufakis shut down the EU in its claim that Brexit will act favourably to the bloc, questioning Brussels' future without the UK. The European Commission is tipped to present a proposal this month that would introduce EU-wide coronavirus vaccination passports. Commission President Ursula von der Leyen announced the news today, revealing that the outfit would submit a legislative proposal. The EU was thought to be against the idea of digitalist passports that might open up free movement across the continent. Last week, the bloc was urged to consider them in order to invigorate a flailing tourism industry. France and Germany, who are largely regarded as spearheading the EU, said any document could be premature. This is because data on the efficacy of vaccines in preventing a person from carrying or passing on COVID-19 is incomplete. The issue of fairness has also been raised. Vaccine passports would allow the older populations of countries to travel, while younger, healthy people wait at the bottom of the list. A whole swath of people would therefore face discriminatory restrictions on their lives still. Yet, Ms. von der Leyen's announcement will strike hopes that movement could return across Europe this year. It will be just one in a string of things that the EU will paint as its move to modernization in a post-COVID-19 and post-Brexit world. Yanis Varoufakis, Greece's former finance minister, recently spoke about the policies the bloc is now chasing post-Brexit, many of which it says it can do as a result of not being tied to the UK. Talking at a virtual event held by the Economic Research Council in January, Mr Varoufakis looked to dispel the idea that the EU might prosper because of Britain's departure. Rather, he said that it is now time to question how the EU might fare without the UK. Noting the areas that the EU is now pushing towards, he said, if you talk to the great and the good in Brussels, as well as in the European capitals, and you ask them, question, so, what has Brexit done for the EU? In a version of the original Sour Grapes of Aesop, it's about the fox pretending not to want the grapes simply because she cannot reach the grapes. In that original idea of Aesop's, the dominant response in Brussels today and European capitals, Berlin, Brussels, Paris, Rome, is that, well, good riddance to the Brits, now that Brexit has happened we're free from the shackles of the problematic partner in London, and our response to Brexit has been right and proper. They will cite three important moves that the EU has made, facilitated and may be occasioned by Brexit. They will say that the threat of Brexit or the threat of the repercussions of Brexit has caused Angela Merkel to shift her position substantially, to remove Germany from the frugal four and to embrace a Hamiltonian moment. The second point, that this is the acceptance of the notion of common debt binding the Eurozone. They will also point to recent developments on the front of attempting to turn the euro into a competitor of the dollar. These three things, Germany out of the frugal group, accepting common debt, the creation of a recovery fund which is a major move towards integration, and finally the ambition that was caused early by Brexit but also, by the way, in which Donald Trump used the agreement with Iran on nuclear disarmament against the Europeans. Let's assess that claim, that the EU has used Brexit as an opportunity to move towards integration, to make the steps that it should have made towards greater integration. It's a hypothesis that I wish to scrutinize and it is a hypothesis which, let me warn you from the outset, I shall dismiss. For an hour and a half, Mr. Varoufakis went on to pick apart the EU's claims that he had set out. The EU's recovery fund gained much attention when it was agreed on in 2020. It was finally given the green light earlier this year, meaning for the first time in the bloc's history, member states shared a collective debt. 